De Laurentiis is a name that commands respect among those who admire cinema. He was one of the first Italian producers to take Italian movies to the world stage after the Second World War. Having produced films for the likes of Federico Fellini, he was instrumental in the production of over 150 movies with his company De Laurentiis Cinematographica. After relocating to the U.S., he formed a De Laurentiis Entertainment Group that delivered hits like Evil Dead 2, King Kong Lives, Blue Velvet, Conan the Barbarian, King Kong, Flash Gordon, and is hailed for over 500 movies, 38 of which were nominated for the Academy Awards. However, after the movie Million Dollar Mystery tanked at the box office, the studio went bankrupt and was acquired by Karolko Pictures. He breathed his last in the year 2010, leaving behind the works that immortalized him. This video is a tribute to the maestro where we take you through some of the awesome, lesser-known works by his studio that deserve more attention. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. After lies, baby Johnny. Here I come, little Johnny. Uncle Rumpel's on his way. <laughs> Rumpel Stillskin, 1995. The grotesque baby stealing monster was cursed and imprisoned in a brownish green stone a thousand years ago. In present day Los Angeles, a police officer is killed in the line of duty, and his wife accidentally drops a tear on the stone that Rumpel Stillskin is imprisoned in. He is released and transforms into the woman's husband, fooling her for a while before he tries to suck her baby's soul out. She is helped by a sleazy television host as the monster pursues them for the baby. Rumpelstiltskin is a wonderfully crafted cheesy horror flick with the perfect mix of funny dialogues and some hilarious violent scenes. When the scary guy in the movie has the funniest lines and keeps saying, fucketh me, because he belongs from the 14th century, you know that the film doesn't take itself seriously. There is a scene where a little dwarf, Rumpy, is hanging on a window ledge before miraculously floating down onto a car window about a hundred yards away. Many such moments will make you cry with laughter. The titular monster is delightfully nasty and takes his time to stalk and terrorize those who stand in his way. Max Grodencheck is brilliant in the role of Rumpelstiltskin, while Kim Johnston Ulrich and Tommy Blaze are impressive in their respective roles. You can tell from the looks of this movie and the poor special effects that they are low on budget, but they are high on humor, and that makes it a fun journey. Raw Deal 1986 Mark Kaminsky is a former FBI agent who has been forcibly retired for excessive brutality and reduced to a small-town sheriff. Harry, his old friend from the Bureau, seeks his help when his son is murdered by a deadly mob. Mark jumps in to help and infiltrates the powerful mob family to end it for good. He goes undercover as he looks to redeem himself and get back into the FBI for his work. If one man has to take on the entire Chicago syndicate, then it better be Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he is absolutely menacing as the unforgiving Mark Kaminsky. He works his way through the mob ranks to identify the moles in the FBI ranks, and when he does, the finding is sure to leave you shocked. Raw Deal has a generous dose of action sequences throughout the movie, and the shootout at the end is one explosive moment to watch out for. The thumping musical score is sure to get your adrenaline rushing in these action-packed scenes. It is said that Arnold Schwarzenegger agreed to star in this movie after much haggling with the producer De Laurentiis. Regarding dissolving their multi-picture agreement, he was keen to work on Total Recall, but Laurentiis made sure that Raw Deal was made before anything else. The duo keeps up their good work despite the budgetary constraints that sometimes led to choppy editing for this movie. It is no match for the likes of Donnie Brasco or License to Kill in terms of the plot, but it still manages to be a thorough entertainer. Overdrive, 1985. Imagine machines coming to life and going for a homicidal rampage. A strange radiation storm due to a passing comet causes machines to come to life and they turn against their makers. In the chaos, a group of survivors find themselves battling against some deadly homicidal trucks that are after their lives. 
They try to escape the monstrous semi-trailers, but their efforts seem to be futile. They must stop the machines before the machines stop them. Firstly, you must judge it for what it is. This movie is nothing but an entertaining B-grade action sci-fi flick that doesn't cater to rational thinking or logic. There are some major loopholes, such as, despite all the machines coming to life, the Honeymooner's car works just fine. Ignore such flaws, and you will enjoy a lighthearted movie where trucks, steamrollers, lawnmowers, and pretty much anything are trying to finish off humans. They have no sympathy, as is evident from the scene where a little kid is squashed by a steamroller. There are some iconic scenes, such as when a vending machine starts shooting cans at kids at max speed. Stephen King himself donned the director's hat for this one and we have to say that he did a rather impressive job. This campy yet entertaining movie has a kick-ass soundtrack courtesy of ACDC that absolutely syncs with the madness. Grab a few beers and enjoy this unconventional and bizarre story. Trick or Treat 1986 Heavy metal idol Sammy Kerr dies in a hotel fire, and the mishap devastates his most loyal fan, Eddie Weinbauer, who is a high school student. Eddie is presented with a rare demo record of the late rock star and is shocked to discover that he is able to communicate with Sammy. It helps to get back at his bullies, but soon he realizes that he is a part of a far more sinister plan by Sammy. Now, Eddie is the only one who can stop Sammy's satanic comeback that can ruin the town. Trick or Treat is a fine specimen of typical 80s horror that has its cheesy bits and an overwhelming plot with some fun bit. More importantly, it is a gift for the metal fans with its perfect soundtracks. The story does offer some creepy moments and you are bound to feel for Eddie, the protagonist in a constant dilemma on how to deal with his hero, who is back as a villain. The cheesiness is intentional and is part of the charm of this film. When Sammy uses an electric surge to escape the record and come back to reality, things get brutal. There are some unforgettable scenes, such as the one where a crowd goes wild as Sammy appears on stage, but he starts killing them by shooting lightning at them as he reveals his burnt face. While you enjoy this fun flick, do not miss the cameos from the real-life rock stars like Ozzy Osbourne. Manhunter, 1986. Will is a former FBI profiler who studied criminal behavior to analyze their thoughts and nab them. When an elusive serial killer seems untraceable, his former boss requests his assistance. This killer is known to the world as the Tooth Fairy, and he slaughters random families in their houses during full moon nights. To solve this case, Will has to get some help from an imprisoned serial killer, Dr. Hannibal Lecter who had a horrific encounter with Will before he was caught. Can Will stop the killer before he makes his next move? It's probably among the most underrated thrillers of its time, and while many are unaware of the movie Red Dragon, not many have given Manhunter a chance. It is a wonderful adaptation of the book, and the plot is simply out of the world. The characters have been developed carefully, and the skillful direction focuses more on building the tension rather than shocking you with sudden scenes. The interactions with Dr. Hannibal Lecter are sure to send a shiver down your spine as you observe an uneasy Will battling his worst nightmare to solve the case. Michael Mann, the director, adds a human touch to the serial killer with his agonizing backstory and his love for a blind lady. Brian Cause is stunning as the creepy Hannibal Lecter, while William Peterson is just perfect as Will. If you haven't watched this yet, it is time to revisit the classic that introduced this enchanting story for the first time on the silver screen. Year of the Dragon 1985 The Chinese Mafia in New York hates Captain Stanley for being an honest cop who disturbs their arrangement with the authorities. He is also hated by people in the police force for his righteous ways, but he is a one-man army. When Joey Tai becomes the leader of the Mafia, Stanley single-handedly takes on his might that results in a bloody conflict. When two men with no intentions to compromise face off, there can be only one outcome, the scorching direction of Michael Cimino. 
and a gripping storyline makes this one of the most underrated cop flicks of the era. When the character of Stanley launches a ruthless battle against the Mafia, some promising action sequences are guaranteed. Mickey Rourke delivers one of his most realistic performances, and John Lone is the perfect baddie with his menacing mannerisms. The plot has one of the most accurate portrayals of the dark side of Chinatown, and credit goes to the makers for giving such attention to detail. There is some graphic violence as the director does not shy away from showcasing the true brutality of the gangs. The movie drew some flack for being racist to the Chinese community at the time of its release, and there was some unfair bashing from the critics. This might not be in the same league as Camino's Oscar-winning epic, The Deer Hunter, but the film packs quite a punch if you're up for it. Tiger, watch out! Barbarella, 1968. The movie is set in the distant future where an evil scientist, Durand Durand, has invented the deadly positronic ray that can destroy the Earth. To nab the scientist, the president of the Earth, assigns a brave astronaut, Barbarella, to find him on a far-off planet. As she sets off on her mission, she has to also deal with the Black Queen and her sexual torture devices in the course of her perilous journey. The roads are treacherous, but the fate of the Earth rests on her. Based on a French comic by Jean-Claude Forrest, this movie is a psychedelic sci-fi sex comedy that has an exciting plot. There are some silly moments, but you're not going to watch it for an award-winning story in the first place. The movie focuses more on removing every bit of clothing on the protagonist than on the story, and the fans weren't complaining with the alluring Jane Fonda playing the role. Laughable special effects combined with shiny sets will provide you a film that is not meant to be taken seriously. However, it is visually appealing thanks to the psychedelic shots of moving colors and forms. You will also enjoy several hilarious moments such as the evil organ of desire scene, and the witty dialogues will leave you in splits. If you are curious as to how campy flicks used to be back in the 60s, Barbarella holds the answers. <laughs> Breakdown, 1997. A couple is driving cross-country from Mass to San Diego when their car breaks down in the middle of a desert. The wife takes a lift from a friendly trucker to reach a nearby diner and call for help. However, a nasty surprise awaits the husband when he finds that his wife is missing. The trucker claims to have never met the couple and the sheriff seems to think that his wife left him. When he realizes that his wife has been kidnapped for ransom, Nothing can stop him from finding her. Action thrillers featuring Kurt Russell have earned a reputation for being entertaining and breakdown does not disappoint your expectations. It is a great thriller where the audience would be kept at the edge of their seat for much of the movie. They will also be treated to some exciting action sequences where Kurt Russell delivers his brand of justice. Imagine the tensions around the scene where Kurt Russell's character clings to the bottom of a moving truck and tries to make his way to the front. The best thing about this movie is that it doesn't hurry you into all guns blazing kind of action. Instead, it carries out an intelligent buildup that makes sure that you do not move a muscle while watching this. Breakdown is a terrific thriller with a concrete plot and is certainly worth your time. Taipan, 1986. This movie is a historical fiction that tells the story of the times when British forces were engaged in a long-drawn battle with the port city of Hong Kong. The fraudulent actions of the British merchants enraged the local Chinese, and an uprising is quelled by the forces. Dirk becomes the leader of the forces, but he must face a challenging opposition from Tyler, who also harbors dreams to rule over Hong Kong. Based on James Clavell's novel, the movie closely mirrors the masterpiece and makes for an intriguing watch. They obviously could not adapt every bit of the 900-page book, but the bits they picked were well-knit to give you an insight into the incidents back then. James Bond star Roger Moore was all set to play the role of Dirk, but had to back out in the last moment. Brian Brown, however, did a fantastic job with great support from John Stanton and Joan Chen. While historical accuracy is missing, the projection of the bygone era is spot on in the film. The clever use of locations and decent production values make this a stunning effort. 
If only they had more time, many more aspects of the book could be covered. As long as you love exotic melodramas, Tai Pan will prove to be a fulfilling watch. The Bedroom Window, 1987 Terry has an affair with his boss's wife, Sylvia, and the two ensure that their relationship is kept a secret. One night, while they are together, they witness a rape and murder attempt on a woman from their window. Sylvia doesn't speak to the police as she believes that it would risk their secret affair, but Terry gives the police the description of the attacker. However, things do not go according to plan as he becomes the main suspect in the case. To come clean, he must find the real attacker with a little help from the victim. The premise of the movie hits you hard because it shows how irrational behavior or a small mistake can lead to something far more serious. Terry, the protagonist, is a flawed man who makes a desperate attempt to cover for his mistakes. This film has a Hitchcock-type feel to it and is a well-written thriller helped by some top-notch acting performances. Steve Guttenberg steals the show as the scared and confused Terry. Elizabeth McGovern and Isabel Hubbard are amazing in their respective roles, and together the cast works like a well-oiled machine. A menacing mood and atmosphere are maintained throughout the movie to keep you guessing. Gilbert Taylor's cinematography needs no introduction, and he aces it one more time with some stunning shots. The climax is somewhat melodramatic and has some unintentional humor in the scenes with a man in a phone booth. Overall, with all the twists in the plot and the fluent narrative, The Bedroom Window is an engaging and exciting thriller. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe!